Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. Don't get stuck putting all those miles and depreciation on your personal vehicle. Instead, check out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used the program for 10 weeks. It was super simple, and Fair even arranged for Uber to pick me up at my home and drive me to my new car, which was a nice Hyundai Elantra for $195 per week plus taxes. That price includes the car, plus your rideshare insurance, and best of all, unlimited miles. Now, when you compare this program to Lyft's program, the cost for the car is less and the bonuses are more. The program is available in California for now, but there are other programs all across the country. So check the FAIR website for prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out, download the FAIR app, get a car today. It's a great program. And be sure to use our code, which is RSG100, RSG100, so we get credit for sending you there. All right? All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Today's episode is called, If Uber and Lyft Driving is So Bad, Why Do We Keep Doing It? So, you know, it was kind of a question that was posed to me recently, something I've thought about too, because if you read the internet, you know, the news on the internet, it would seem uh, rideshare driving is the worst thing you could do. You know, rates are dropping, Uber and Lyft are fighting against AB5, AB5 Pass, but we all know Uber and Lyft aren't going to do anything to treat drivers any better. Rates are going down. Uh, what else? Uh, destination filters have been have been cut from six to two, and all kinds of stuff has been going negative, negative, negative. And uh, it makes you ask the question, why, why, why do we keep driving if uh, things are bad? Well, I've made a list of six things, six reasons why, why I think people uh, do keep driving. Uh, now, most don't. Most don't keep driving. So the statistics are that out of three people that start driving, two will quit within the first six months. So we're talking about the one out of three that does stick around after six months. For someone like me, I've been driving for almost four years, and I know there are a lot of you out there that have been driving for a while, or you want to keep driving. And uh, why? You got to ask yourself why. If you're complaining about something, why keep doing it when you could go, uh, you know, in a booming economy, lots of opportunities to find jobs. Um, you know, you can find lots of things to do on the internet and uh, make a living. Why do we stick around? Well, here's why I think we stick around, dear uh, listeners. First of all, habits are hard to break, right? We're, we're creatures of comfort, and it's easy to get into a habit and then stick with it, you know? Uh, it's better the devil you know. Have you heard that expression? Um, so rather than, you know, quit this thing and go do something else or find something else while we're doing this thing, we just keep doing the same thing. It's just, it's just our nature. Habits are hard to break. Second reason I think we keep driving is we get stimulated by the passengers. All right? I, I mean, every day I have a wonderful conversation with a passenger, right? It's, it's fantastic, right? Like uh, I'm driving up here in Sacramento now, and uh, I'm picking up uh, a lot of people that are going to uh, dialysis centers. I've had like five people in 10 days. 
And dialysis is where you go in, uh, you got to do it three days a week, and you got to do it for three hours at a time, and you got to hook up to this machine, and your blood is pumped out of you, pumped through a machine, cleaned, and then pumped back into your body. You know? And I've talked to some people, and it's it's like, how else am I going to learn about dialysis from people who are actually getting dialysis done if I weren't driving? Then there's also some methadone clinics up here. So I've been picking up people who are, you know, heroin addicts, uh, opioid addicts, and uh, they're doing the methadone uh, to, to help, you know, get through the situation that they're in. Again, you know, what do I know about methadone? But these people are pretty interesting. You know, they've had some real struggles in their lives, you know, whether they just like like the heroin or uh, they got addicted because of, you know, one guy had two bad knees and he just was in so much pain, he started taking the opioids and boom, got hooked. So point being that you learn a lot. It's pretty stimulating having someone get into your car and you start talking to them. That's a hard thing to give up. If I ever do stop driving 100%, I'll miss that. Third thing I think uh, that we love about driving is that we're stimulated by the open road, right? I mean, uh, when I drove in San Francisco, I used to love taking people to the airport right as the sun was coming up over the bay. There's this long strip uh, on 101 where uh, you could see the sun rising above the water. And it was absolutely beautiful. Or sometimes I could get a ride uh, um, up at uh, Twin Peaks Summit, right? And I could see the whole city of San Francisco at my feet. You know, both bridges, I could see the ocean, I could see the bay. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there's just some beautiful things. And just being in a car and being able to turn right and turn left, I mean, it's it's fantastic. You can uh, get, on, get onto the freeway and punch the gas and go fast. And uh, there's just so many great feelings, great sensations that come from uh, being on the open road. I've always loved uh, being in a car. When I was a kid, we used to go on vacations. And um, I just love it. I still love it. Um, so even if I'm not driving for Uber and Lyft, I'll always drive. Okay, the fourth reason why I think <laughs> we continue to drive is uh, we, we are hope we're a hopeful bunch. We have an irrational hope that it will get better. I say irrational because since this thing started, it has progressively gotten worse. So we haven't had any real upticks. Until recently, we've had the passing of AB5, uh, in California, Gavin Newsom signed the bill. It's law. And something's going to happen in, in January. Uh, if nothing, we've got some, some good leverage as drivers. Um, but in reality, probably Uber and Lyft are going to act like they're above the law. They're not going to respect the law. And nothing's really going to happen. But we have hope. We're, we just have hope. We're entrepreneurs at heart. And we have hope that it's going to get better. So that's the fourth reason we keep driving. We have hope. We think it's going to get better. We're going to make some extra money. Um, Uber and Lyft aren't going to exert so much control. You know, I have a hope that I'm going to be able to set my own prices and, and charge more for my rides because I think my rides are better than your rides. <laughs> so uh, that's the fourth reason. We have irrational hope. It will get better. Fifth reason I think we like to drive is because it's kind of easy work, you know, it's not as easy as some people think, but it's easy. It's the easiest job I've ever had. You know, I don't have to really sell anything. All my career, I've been in sales. I've been building my own companies. I've always had to sell, 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 make things happen. Here I can just get in my car. I get a ping. I pick somebody up, say hello, you know, have a nice little chat, drive, drop them off. And we can get paid very quickly, right? At the end of the day, at the end of the hour, you can have that money that you just earned put into your bank account and you can then take that money from your bank account, put it into your pocket. So that's pretty cool. So easy work and quick pay. That's another reason. And the last reason, it's pretty obvious, but I got to say it, the double Fs, freedom and flexibility. Even though Uber and Lyft do exert a lot of control, they can't tell me when I have to work. They may give me bonuses for working at certain times and, and try and control my, my driving habits, but... Ultimately, I can drive when I want to drive, and that's freedom, and that's flexibility. And if I want to take off for two weeks and go on a vacation, I can still do that. No matter what's happened out there in rideshare land, I can drive when I want, and I can take off when I want. And um, 
even though it's not as good as it used to be, uh, it's still good. It's still got some great stuff. Um, I wrote an article and I put a spreadsheet in that article and I compared my earnings in 2016 when I started to my earnings now. And I'm making a full 20% less. So if I put in a 50 hour week in San Francisco, I used to be able to make $2,200. This year, if I put in 50 hours, I would make $1,750. And that's because I'm making less money because the per mile rate has been dropped. I'm making about 50% less on surge and prime time, which are gone. Now there's personal power zones. Uh, the bonus instead of 500 is now down to 300. Overall, that's a $450 less per week, just based on things that Uber and Lyft have done uh, f uh, for us. Uh, and that's a, I'm making 80% of what I used to make. Still, I can work 50 hours and make 1750, not terrible. And I could uh, take off and go to uh, Japan if I want to. So there's a lot of reasons. Uh, most likely, not much is going to change in the next five years. You know, things are just going to keep getting a little bit worse, a little bit worse. But we are a hopeful bunch. Uh, but it's it's important to be to be realist as well. Um, so that's why I think we drive. What do you think? Do you think uh, Do you think I missed anything here? Why do you drive? Do you drive just to make some money? Uh, do you drive uh, to help you move uh, towards the realization of your plan B? You know, these are some other reasons that you might might be choosing to drive. But as I wrap this up, I just want to say that I'm proud to be a driver. Do you know? I'm proud to have a job in which I can take people from point A to point B. I can provide a really good service and I get paid some money to do it. It's very clean. And for the most part, 90% of the time, I really enjoy it. So, uh, I, I, I am Jay. I am a rideshare uh, driver. And uh, even though I'm not a full-time driver anymore, I'm, I, I still love to get out there and, and do this thing. And, uh, and who knows? It just might get better. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com, where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to do online work you love from anywhere in the world. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily, in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode, and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I'm really enjoying doing that. All right. Next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there. <laughs>